MindBait presents 7 Historical Myths You Still Believe Number 1. It is one of the most iconic scenes of the Revolutionary War. The image of Paul Revere on horseback shouting, The British are coming! turning him into one of the country's greatest patriots. But this moment has little to do with reality. In fact, the valiant Paul Revere on horseback can only be found in a famous poem titled Paul Revere's Ride by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, which appeared 85 years after the ride itself. Obviously, since he was a poet and not a historian, Wadsworth took significant liberties in order to portray Revere as heroically as possible. Number 2. The legend of Betsy Ross designing the first American flag is very pervasive today, mostly due to great timing. But the truth is that there is no historical evidence to suggest that Ross or any other person was solely responsible for creating the flag design, with the 13 stars arranged in a circle. However, it should be noted that during her time, Ross herself never claimed responsibility for the feat. According to Betsy, her contributions involved selecting a five-pointed star over a six-pointed one because they were easier to make. Number 3. The Great Seal of America was chosen in 1782 with the bald eagle front and center. Since then, a rumor has persisted that Benjamin Franklin actually wanted the wild turkey to become the national bird. There is actually some truth to the story. Franklin thought the design for the eagle in the original seal looked more like a turkey. Then he proceeded to compare the two. Franklin didn't like the bald eagle, considering it a bird of bad moral character for its tendency to steal food from other birds. He thought that by comparison, the turkey was a more courageous and respectable bird, despite looking a little vain and silly. Number 4. The cowboy is one of the most iconic images in American history, but that doesn't mean our understanding of it isn't flawed. The iconic cowboy hat, the Stetson, might be what every cowboy wears in westerns, but it wasn't what they actually wore in real life until the very end of the Wild West. The Stetson wasn't even around until 1865, and in fact, it became really popular at the end of the 19th century. Up until then, you can clearly see from the famous image of the Wild Bunch pictured above which hat cowboys preferred. The Derby, also known as the bowler hat. The sombrero was also quite popular, but a gentleman might have preferred a top hat. Number 5. It's a famous real-life line that turned into one of the most recognizable quotes in cinema history. It's a little wrong, though. What was actually said in the mission was, Houston, we've had a problem. But that's not the real issue here. This is actually a case of misattribution. Most of us know the line from Apollo 13 the movie where Tom Hanks played Commander Jim Lovell, and since he's the main character, he delivers the line. However, in real life, the line was initially said by backup command module pilot Jack Swigert, played by Kevin Bacon in the movie. Number 6. We've all heard the story of how Orson Welles once did a radio show covering H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Supposedly, people thought that it was real and that the Earth was being invaded and mass panic ensued. Well. Well, there is some truth to that. Some people did mistake the show as a genuine report, but the extent of the problem was greatly exaggerated, because not that many people were listening to the show in the first place. The broadcast didn't have a large audience, and it was in a very competitive time slot, going against much more popular shows. Furthermore, several CBS affiliates chose to replace the broadcast when it originally aired, and there were also notices proclaiming the story to be fictional during each commercial break. Number 7. Supposedly, the Wall Street crash of 1929 was so bad that numerous bankers, brokers, and others working in the financial district suddenly found themselves penniless. Out of desperation, they all started jumping out of the windows. This is more or less a myth. The suicide rate for New York in the months following the crash went down which actually is quite common after a tragic event. Several prominent figures did commit suicide during that time, but it wasn't by jumping out windows. In fact, between October 1929, when the crash happened, and the end of the year, only two such suicides were recorded on Wall Street. Thank you for watching another amazing video. Please remember to subscribe for more.